Hi, my name is Mel Tari. In these last 50 years of serving the Lord, I have seen him heal people from all kinds of diseases. So I would like to share with you certain principles that may help you as you, out of compassion to the sick, pray for them to be healed. The Bible verse that comes to mind right now is what Jesus said to the disciples, they shall lay hand on the sick and the sick shall recover. Many Christians would like to think that that privilege to lay hand on the sick is reserved for the apostles or prophets or pastors or evangelists or some special somebody in the church. But I would like to remind you today that when Jesus said, they say lay hand, sell a hand on the sick and the sick shall recover, it's talking about the believers because he said, those who believe sell a hand on the sick. So if you believe, you qualify to lay hand on the sick because you and I laying hand on the sick is the sign of our obedience and faith on Jesus, the healer, and the word that he has given us. I remember I was in Hungary many years ago, and the meeting was packed that night. It was hardly any place for me to move around. The elders were all over the pulpit where I was standing with my translator, and the house were just packed, standing room only. So after I was sharing and preaching and all that, I said to the people, anyone here who is sick, please raise up your hand. So probably half the congregation lift up the hand. And since there's no room to move, I said to the people, now remember this Bible first. And I told them the Mark 16 Bible first that I just uh, tell you, uh, told you right now. And I said, you are a believer. And if you are, I want you to take your right hand and lay it on the sick person, like Jesus said. But since there's no way to move around, I just said, those of you who lift, lift up your hand, take your right hand and put it where you feel or you know the sickness is tonight. But I said to them, if you have more than two sickness, or you're not quite sure where to lay your hand because maybe you have fever or polio or whatever sickness that you have in your body, then I suggest to make it simple and not to complicate things. Take your right hand and put it on your forehead and then we'll pray. So I said, let's do it. So everybody were putting their hand where they feel the healing is needed. And so one lady in particular took her right hand, put it on her forehead, because since she was born for about 19 years up to that point, she will have polio. And polio has been so bad that her left arm and her left leg uh, has become, let's call it dead or numb, so she couldn't use it. So she has to walk with a crutch under her uh, left arm. So she put her hand on her head as I was instructing or encouraging to do, and we pray. After a minute or so prayer, we finish, dismiss. We went to the pastor's house behind the church. And as we were sitting there for late soup or dinner, this lady walked onto the building or onto the, onto the kitchen, was talking a mile a minute. She was so happy. You can tell that she was excited about something. And she told us this story as the pastor inquired. She said, while well, she put her hand on her forehead, she felt there's a hand on top of her head, or her hair. And she was wondering, who is messing with her hair here? But then after that, she felt like a golden liquid or a certain special feeling coming down from her head, down her uh, face, down her left arm. And the moment that feeling or that golden liquid lift her, uh, uh, touch her left arm, the left arm was instantly healed. She can feel it. She can uh, lift it up. And then uh, the liquid, as I call it now, or she called it, go down all her uh, left uh, leg and her leg that has been dead and can't be moved for 19 years at least, now is alive, kicking. And so as she was telling us the story, she took off her shoes, walking back and forth a mile a minute, uh, praising the Lord and testifying about the healing that just took place. I told you this story for a reason, that every believer, you and I, can lay hand on the sick and the sick shall recover. You might say, well, how can we heal them? Well, let me tell you something. I have seen God raise people from the dead, make the blind to see, the crippled to walk. This last 50 years in the Indonesian revival, we have seen God change water into wine. We have walked across rivers to go preach in villages, and God make it possible for us to go across, even though the river was actually impassable at that time, maybe 10 meters deep or somewhere there. 
I've seen a lot of miracles, but I want you to tell you something, that even though all the miracles that I've seen, I don't know how to heal. Because the truth is this, you and I can heal people, but Jesus, by the presence of the Holy Spirit, can. So it is not how to heal that is important for you and I to know. It is how you and I can have trust in Jesus, believe in his word, and obey him. And when we do our part, he will do the impossible part, like healing the sick, making the blind to see, the crippled to walk, raise the dead, or whatever that is that he needs to do to demonstrate to the world that he is God, he is Jesus, and he loves them. I trust that this little conversation will help you, but I want you not just to know about it and say, oh, great, what Mel have seen. But I want this little conversation here to help you so that you will be encouraged to go as you see your friends who are sick and might need help. You can introduce them to Jesus if they don't know him yet. And if they do, you can lay hands on them and encourage them to believe. Because if you do, God will come through and you will see his healing, his gift, and his miracle given to the people who need it. To him be all the glory, and you will rejoice knowing that Jesus is alive and his word is true. God bless you, my friend.